Hello and welcome everybody to today's lecture about protection in electrical power systems. And today I invite you to look into network structure, protection and operations, and especially into risk and risk management. Why risk and risk management in protection? Electric faults are random events and they are subjected to statistics. So they are not deterministic but statistic and therefore risk is the focus to put on when you design protection systems. Risk is by definition the product of probability of its occurrence and of the amount of damage in case of a fault of an event. So that means R is P times D. The challenge in electrical power systems protection is that the probability is very low and the damage is very high. So we have multiplying something that is nearly zero with something that is nearly infinity and that is challenging. So since this is a product curves of equal risk are represented in a linear scale as you see to my right side as hyperbolas and if you take another scale for example logarithmic scale a hyperbola turns into a straight line that comes down. So you see the high risk area is in the top right corner and the low risk area which is desirable is in the low left corner. So what can risk manage do for this? Risk management can reduce the probability with constant damage. So this is the yellow arrow. Also it can reduce the damage with the same probability of occurrence and it can of course do both reduce the probability and the damage and then the point where you have been before moves right down to the center and that is advantages. Now characteristic values for single and multiple stage operating processes will be demonstrated by you in case of a lot. If you buy a lot you have it in your hand and you before you open it you do not know what is inside. And now let's imagine that this lot will either give us a profit plus 800 euros or it could, could give us a loss, complete loss. So then the expected value of this when you take the probabilities into account is 90% is losses, total losses and 10% is gain. So the expected value comes out as plus 80 units. So to get there to buy this lot we have to make an investment which in this case may be 100 units so all together we arrive at the expected value if we do this at minus 20 euros and that will arrive at minus 20 units so that means as is well known when buying a lot or many lots you are in the long run going to lose so there is another strategy when it comes to buying lots not to do anything so if you have this, the expected value is zero because we do not have a lot and we do not have an, an acquisition necessity. So the whole thing has the expected value of zero. And now if you combine these to buy a lot or to not to buy a lot, then we have two expected values. The upper path here shows us that the expected value of buying a lot is minus 20 units. And the other solution, not to buy a lot at all, is zero. So in this case it would be wiser not to buy a lot. So the calculation of probabilities in risk management will be given in the following. So the basic principle of probabilities are if C1 and C2 are mutually exclusive the probability you have either this or this is the sum of the two. If C1 and C2 are complementary then this is the well-known result. And now what is interesting, if we have the chance that either this or that occurs, then the probability, if these events C1 and C2 are not mutually exclusive, is the sum of the probabilities minus the combined probabilities of the two. But as I mentioned before, probabilities in electrical protection are very low, so the square of these probabilities is a, such a small unit that you can neglect it and you come out with just with a plain sum. 
The last uh, basic rule for probabilities is the multiplication theorem for independent events. So if we have independent events and want to see one is this happening and the other one, the probability is given by the product. So now we apply this to the probabilities in system operation. So in system operation we apply the stress statistics of low probabilities which is the so-called Poisson distribution. So the prerequisite to apply this is in electrical networks more or less plausible. It means we need linearity on a small scale. That means if a network is twice as large as the other one it will have double as many incidents and if you have more time for example two years you have double the value on the average as you would have if you observe this process for one year only so this is called the linearity on a small scale so the Poisson distribution in this case gives the answer to the question what is the probability of it, that an event what is the probability that an event occurs, how often, during which period, and at a given event rate. And then there is a formula, which I sh can be seen here. Now just let's apply this. So, let's think that we observe a quantity, like a collective of 100 kilometers of cable network, and this is expected to have an average of three disturbances per year. And now the question is, what is the probability that we have exactly four occurrences, four disturbances in half a year? So now, let's see. The question is, how often do we want to have this event? It is four. What is the period in which we observe this? This is half a year. And what is the given event rate? That was already stated above. It's three per year. If we insert these figures into the well-known formula, we arrive finally, after some multiplications, at the value of 0.068 per unit, or colloquially speaking, 6.8%. And the answer to the question is the probability of exactly four disturbances in six months, which is half a year, is 6.8%. So also it can be said that on the average every 15th year such an event will occur in this half a year. So the last thing is the stochastic processes in system operation. So to our right we see a system which has upstates and downstates. The upstates means full operation, downstates means out of service for whatever reason. Now we have a certain observation period in the rule we say one year when it comes to protection and we have outage times and operating times and now the non-reliability is given by these red uh, marked areas of time which is the down times and these are summed up and put in relation to the total observation time. By applying a trick to modify the enumerator that means multiplying it by one and one is given in this term on the circle and by summarizing the denominator we finally arrive at the well-known formula that the non-reliability is given by the product of the frequency how often does an event occur and with the average outage time ta and again let's apply this to an example so we would like to have the non-availability and non-reliability for a length of three kilometers of cable and we know that the average outage frequency is three events per 100 kilometers. Now the question is how big is the non-reliability of this three kilometers of cable? So the solution is First, in the first steps, we determine the frequency of these three kilometers of cable route, multiplied with the average outage time of 12 hours, and we arrive at a non-reliability NR of 0.011%.
and the reliability on contrast is 99.989%, so very high. And the answer is the cable is every 12 years out of service and faulty. And on the statistical average, the cable outage time is little less than one hour per year, which does not mean that in the case of an event, it is out for 12 years. And the non-reliability then in this case is 0.0111%, and the reliability 99% as said above. So this was today's lecture about risk and risk management, and I described you the principle of these. I invite you to see the next lecture about the application of these risk calculations to real network types in order to determine how safe the electricity supply is. Thank you very much.